Hey guys, so today I'm going to be installing a <clears throat> PCV catch can on my 2014 Sierra 5.3 liter. Uh, so what you need to do uh, first of all is remove your air intake tube. This thing right here, it's pretty easy. It's just held on with a clamp here and a clamp here. And then it's also got two um, vents that go to the top of the valve covers here and here on either side. Those kind of just pop off. There's a clip you have to squeeze and they pop off, I'll show you. But for a little bit before, the catch can I'm gonna be installing is an RX catch can. Um, one of the better on the market. There's plenty of catch cans out there. Really, you're not hurting yourself by using a catch can. Um, whatever brand it is, should do the trick. Uh, the good thing about these is they have an internal check valve which will help uh, you know keep even more crap in the can and less crap out of your engine. So it comes with um, obviously the can, a nice easy uh, drain valve and some tubing um, for your drain. Um, it comes with the fittings on top here you see a couple of different mounting brackets, a couple of a pair of bolts, and looks like uh, some sort of rubber stopper. I won't need that. Maybe a different vehicle would have needed that. And then some hosing, uh, about four or so feet of hose, and then this is a screw type uh, elbow fitting. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off this air box, or air intake tube rather. So uh, to get the clamps off, <clears throat> it's a 5 16 um, socket kind of bit, um, and it's just a screw type valve, or a screw type clamp. So you just uh, loosen that with, uh, you know, a screwdriver type with a 5 16 inch bit on it. And then like I said, there's these two um, vents that go to the top of the valve covers. You can just squeeze this plastic or this um, excuse me, squeeze in this gray part, and it's hard to do with one hand, but I'll try to just get an angle where you can see me do it. See, there you go, piece of cake. Um, those are on both sides, <clears throat> and then you can get the air box off. This one is just reverse. It's, it's actually on the bottom where you squeeze. And like I said, hard with one hand. But uh, I'll do that and I'll take this off and I'll show you what we're looking at next. So with the air box removed, you see the land on there. You have a nice shot of the throttle body. <clears throat> um, and uh, my truck has just over 16,000 miles on it. I don't know if you can tell or not. Uh, there's a little bit of eh, kind of you know carbon and crap like that on the in, on the throttle body. So I'm gonna clean that off. It's only held on with four bolts here and here and then a connector right there. I would advise you do it the same. Uh, you know, just use some throttle body cleaner <clears throat> uh, to clean that out. And then you can also probably, if you have small enough hands, you can reach inside the actual intake and kind of sop up anything that's, you know, laying in there, any oil or residue um, that's that's in there. Um, you can do that. So, but for the PCV um, catch can, what we're going to be doing, my, my truck is a 5.3 liter Ecotec motor. The, um, the, the, uh, the tubing locations vary on the three different uh, engines, the 4.3, the 5.3, the 6.2. They're all slightly different. The 6.2 has both tubes you need or they're like right next to each other. They're really easy to find. Um, the 5.3 is, it's, uh, it's this guy down here. And it runs uh, back to about the mid um, side, mid halfway back on the, uh, the valve cover. You'll, you'll know what it is when you're looking at it. I'll, I'll try to get a better shot here. So, it's this tube, this, and it's the same type of clamp that's on the intake uh, box. You just you have to squeeze in. If you have big hands, it might be kind of hard, but you squeeze it in, and then you follow it back to the other side. It's um, just below here, and it goes back to, uh, it's gonna be hard to see, right there, back here, underneath all those wire loom. So this is what I got from just cleaning off the throttle body and then that's a little bit from the inside of the tube and then that's a little bit more from inside of the tube. I can only get my hand in about up to uh, halfway up my forearm. Um, if someone has smaller hands it might be a little easier. Just a word of warning, be careful on this lip. Uh, it's kind of sharp. 
and I am bleeding from it. So there you go. So, <clears throat> um, but now I have the throttle belly nice and clean. Um, if you can see, the inside is nice and clean. No more dark spots on either side. I just use regular old throttle body cleaner. So, um, yeah, next I'm going to take off the... <clears throat> a little easier to get to the um, hoses uh, with the throttle body off, by the way. So this is the 5.3 one. Um, it's hot right now, my motor's warm. Um, underneath, so I'm going to disconnect that and uh, show you where the one on the back side needs to come off to. Alright, so I have my one end off down there. This guy. And it follows back. And I'm trying to get some light out for you. It's this connector. See, it says INT on it. There you go. Intake. It's this one. So, <clears throat> those are your two in and out spots. Um, the catch can has two openings um, and they will go something like this so that one under the throttle body is going to go to the center opening on the catch can and the one opening on the driver's side uh, about halfway back is going to go to the offset so this is going to go to the driver's side and this is going to go to the one under the throttle body driver's side throttle body so so here's this uh, little tube off the truck. A little tip. So this is where it's going to be sitting when it's attached on the truck. Um, this one, you squeeze the top end here to get it done and you pop it off. This one is on the underside of what you need, is where you need to squeeze. So it's tucked up underneath all those wire loom and whatnot. So it's kind of tough, but um, once you get the bottom one off, you can kind of rotate this whole thing. And you can get it to like right here where you can get your hand in there a little bit better. I use a screwdriver to, to compress and then pull it off um, of its fitting. So now that I have those um, two off, I can figure out where I want to mount the catch can. And then... Hook up the hoses. It's back there somewhere. That's shiny. That's it right there. So here's where I decided to mount my can. Um, right here next to the uh, windshield washer uh, reservoir. And it's being bolted on with a bolt that holds on the electrical fans. I think actually might be holding the entire radiator on. But anyways, it's just one bolt. Um, I loosened it all the way up and put it in the bracket and then put on my can tighten it back up real tight. I'm eventually going to put a um, a, um, a zip tie around this entire thing to hold it from levering when I'm driving down the road. You know how it might bounce, it might help alleviate that some. I am going to need more hose though, um, and I might end up shortening this run of hose that I have here just because, depending on your location, you might need more or less hose. Um, but this was almost all the hose they gave me. And this is actually transmission line oil um, hose. This is all I have left. Obviously, that's not gonna get to underneath the throttle body. So I'm gonna have to go get some more. Depending on where you mount it, you might need more or less. Another common spot to mount um, is on this bolt here with the, um, the brake booster and the brake stuff. Some people said that they could feel the can bouncing around when they were driving, because it's kind of on a long arm. Because um, you could feel it in the pedal basically, because this basically goes all the way through to uh, your brakes and whatnot. So they could feel the vibration in the pedal. I didn't necessarily want to have to deal with that, so that's why I went with this up on the front end here. Um, should be alright. I mean, uh, I don't see why I wouldn't. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to get some more hose and um, tighten up this a little bit, I think, to make it nice. And then I'll probably eventually zip tie all the hoses together and make them look nice or something. I don't know. We'll see. But um, yeah, that's the first run. So this is the offset um, fitting, which screws on. I got it nice and tight with a, a wrench. 
don't over tighten it, you'll break it off or something, but um, this goes to your driver's side about halfway back like we talked about. This other side is going to be going to underneath the throttle body. Now, you can see I actually ended up pulling this well, wire harness out to get more room, but um, you see where that silver clamp is? That's where, I, um, that's where that hose is mounted. And that hose slid on pretty easily. That's why I put a clamp on it. I didn't want it falling off driving down the road. So it's just a you know a little tiny clamp tightened up. Be careful. I, I, I knew a guy that uh, he broke that plastic bib off of the intake. And if you break that off, you have to replace the entire intake. So be very, very, very careful with that piece. All right, so this is what it looks like. Now, my local store did not have transmission line, which is better because it's higher, can take a higher pressure. They only had fuel line. So I'm using fuel line temporarily. I'm gonna order some new um, transmission hose because uh, they didn't have it at the store. So that's what this bottom hose is. You can see fuel line. I'd recommend using a transmission oil line or um, it's 3 8 so whatever you can find in a really high PSI that's meant for oil. The fuel line is okay for temporary purposes, but over time it will begin to uh, to break down because it's not meant for the oil. And then it's also not rated for as much pressure. So anyways, you got the can here, you got the lines going, I got them um, zip tied there, zip tied there, and then they go off to their respective places. So.